So have you ever stopped and asked yourself, what are you going to do in a situation where you go to the grocery store and your family wants, you know, hamburger meat? Maybe you want to make burgers or something and you don't even have that much money to begin with, but you figure you can afford the ground beef. So you go there and there's no ground beef and there's no steak. And also there's no sausages, there's no chicken, there's no pork, there's nothing. It's totally bare. We're already seeing this and bare shelves Biden is something that was trending not too long ago about a week ago, and we're still seeing the result of this. Severe supply chain shortages, and then also worker and labor shortages as well. So we already have a supply chain that is incredibly strained. And this is always only going to exacerbate 10 times worse, at least, at least in my opinion, with the new vaccine mandate for truckers between the US and Canada border that is taking effect now. This is out of zero hedge. Canadian cross-border trucking vax mandate now in effect. Domestic trucking mandate starts this week. And they say that the, the truth is they don't know how bad this disruption will be because there are thousands, tens of thousands of loads, 16 to 38,000 daily loads, in fact, that will be impacted by this vaccine mandate, especially when a lot of these workers, a lot of these truckers do plan on resisting. So you see here, they're already boycotting this. They're stopping traffic. They're parking on the highway between these borders and, and people are stuck in long, long lines of traffic because these truckers aren't having it. They're not getting the jab, right? So the whole point is this is going to strain the system even more. And the leaders in Canada and the United States were fully of aware of what this would do. You know, these truckers, they should not have to be told what to put in their bodies, in my opinion. There shouldn't be any sort of policy mandated by your government to tell you what sort of medical treatments you should take. That's just my opinion. And that's what a lot of the truckers believe as well. And you know what? Good on them. But it will affect you and it will affect the average person here in the U.S. and especially in Canada. With all these loads being being affected, a lot of these truckers are either going to quit, they're going to get fired, or they're going to participate in these um, blockages, right? These sort of blockades and um, and these and, and these protests in, w in which they're doing this. So the question is, you have to ask yourself, what are you going to do in this situation? Let's say you 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 go to the grocery store and these things that you want, you can't get them. So you go to the local restaurant, you go to McDonald's, right? God forbid you go to McDonald's, really though. God forbid you go to, you shouldn't go to McDonald's. Uh, maybe go to, I guess Chipotle might be a little better, I'm not sure. But then they ask you for your vaccine card and they ask you for proof of vaccination. So you don't have that, right? So not only, you can't go to the grocery store, which apparently you're allowed to do even if you're unvaccinated in New York and Boston and Chicago and some of these cities but you can't go to the restaurant so if the grocery stores are empty with the shelves being empty and you can't go get yourself a burger or a, a taco at at the restaurant because you're not vaccinated you got to be able to supply yourself with the food and the supplies necessary um, either by preparing now or by becoming self-sufficient in some way or a combination of the two because it's likely even in this collapse of the United States empire as a global superpower where we're devolving into sort of a second world nation you're still going to have access to some supplies like it's not going to like it's not going to be like the walking dead right I really don't think it's going to get that bad. You know, I am a little bit black pilled, at least short term. Long term, I'm white pilled. I think we'll, we'll, we'll win. And I think the good always wins. The universe bends toward just bends towards ju justice. Um, even facing a scientific dictatorship with like, you know, creepy stuff going on at the top echelons of society, you know, ruled by Satan, etc. Even with that and considering that, we are uh, going to win, but you know there's going to be some tough t times, and th this is why I talk about this stuff because I do think we should be supporting these truckers, but I also think we need to prepare for what we have to do along with them to to make sure this doesn't uh, uh, become successful. This vaccine mandate between the borders, it's not right. And um, I fully support this, but at the same time, it's, it's not going to be easy. You know, this is sacrifice. This is what sacrifice is about. You know, we, we are, it's like uh, the Bible tells us what Jesus told us. We, we have to bear our cross, right? This is part of what, 
we have to do. It's, it's the idea of sacrifice, right? So that being said, there's more you have to know. There's more you have to know because there's another boycott going on that I want you to know about. And this is relating to the same exact thing, except this probably won't affect the supply chain. But this is something you need to do, in my opinion, if you want to participate in the resistance. You need to boycott you need to boycott Carhartt boys. You gotta boycott Carhartt for for real. So Carhartt, the company, you might know them. They make actually pretty decent apparel. You know, it's uh decently high quality, it's warm, um, etc. Uh, a lot of truckers actually use Carhartt too, right? You know, um, so they're now claiming that they're going to still go go along with Biden's vaccine mandate um, that he had for all businesses over 100 employees. They're going to still go along with this, even though it was struck down by the Supreme Court, and they don't have to because they believe in in the COVID religion. They're part of the cult, so. Um, this is what they're doing. They're making their employees take the shot. So I think it's in our best decision, in our best interest to boycott Carhartt. And if you, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but let's put it this way, right? If I owned any Carhartt, which I think I might, I tried looking for it because I was going to do this on video, but I, I couldn't find it. I thought I thought maybe I had a Carhartt shirt. But, you know, if I if I did own a Carhartt shirt or hat or a pair of gloves or coat or something like that, I would set fire to it and I would film it and put it on TikTok or YouTube or Twitter or something and try to make it go viral. That's what I would do. I'm not saying you should, but I would. That's what I would do. But anyway, that's just my two cents on that. You know, we have to get used to being we have to get used to being second class citizens. We have to get used to being the new black people, right? Um, <laughs> I love making that comparison because, you know, uh, it was like segregation before, you know, segregation before the sixties was like, you know, these people have to go there. These people have to go there. And in some communities, yeah, you know, the, it, it, it differed in quality and that's what we're probably going to have. You have here out of a charter school in LA, they're abusing their students by making the unvaccinated eat outside in the pavement and making them making it so they're not allowed to use restrooms or be in class and you know look they're being made to eat outside like dogs right like dogs um and it says here out of gateway pundit several young girls including four freshmen one sophomore and a junior were abused at their school new west charter la because they chose not to get the covid vaccine the girls were denied chairs forced to sit outside in the pavement behind warning tape behind warning tape that's awful that's awful that's like degradation and we're not allowed to use the school's restrooms school police are seen outside the warning tape guarding the area. One little girl describes the abuse. I'm a student at New West Charter School, and I'm here with five other girls. Four of them are freshmen. One is a junior, and I'm a sophomore, and we are being threatened to be suspended because we don't have the COVID-19 vaccination. And we're being refused the right to attend school, and we're being closed off by this caution tape thing. <laughs> we're being segregated from the rest of the school. Very, very sad. Very sad. Look at this. They got to sit by the brick wall, cro you know, cross-legged and, and eating their lunch. Very, very sick. Very sick stuff. And this is, this is, um, this is something we got to get used to, though. Something we got to get used to. So this in combination with uh, inflation hitting an all-time record, the PPI index year over year was at 9.7%. And that's probably an underestimation. We all know. I mean, just look at the prices of everything. They seem, in most cases, to be up more than 9%, 10%. You know, we're talking, especially, when, see, what they do, too, is they reduce the amount of, of, of product in the package. So if you're buying a bag of chips, right, what they, if you look at a bag of chips, the same bag, 
uh, now compared to two years ago, there's going to be less chips in it now, even though the price is either the same or just slightly more. You know, it's going to be you, you would think that, oh, look, the price of uh, f late July chips hasn't gone up. And you look, it's actually a lot less chips than it used to be. So the price has effectively gone up uh, per chip, right? <laughs> per chip. So, yeah, that's what they do. That's how they do it. And that's what we have in many situations. Um and with the inflation and the supply chain shortages, you know, if you, a lot of people will try to compare it to the late 70s, what's going on, because uh, we had double digit inflation at that time, right around the same what we have now, right? 10, 11 percent, something like that. Well, yeah, it, I think it was double digit at one time um, or at least close to that. So the last time inflation was 7 percent, though, which was let's look at the chart. This is the CPI for versus the fed fund rate the last time it was at seven percent was like in the yeah like in the early 80s late 70s and the fed raised the interest rate <laughs> to 11.5 percent so they're talking now about raising the interest rate to two percent for the same amount of inflation so if you compare that, you know, raising the interest rate to 11.5%, if you have 10% inflation, it kind of did fix the problem. But now we're in the same amount of inflation, if not more, and they're talking about raising the rate to 2%, and it's probably not going to do anything. So that's the point. So it don't matter if they raise rates, that's just going to crash the economy and crash stocks and crash crypto. What it's going to do is 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 just make everything worse, probably. I mean, at this point, you're better, I almost think they're better off just devaluing the dollar into oblivion, oblivion and letting us switch to gold and silver and bartering or something, you know, because if they if they crash the economy, that might be a lot more acute and difficult to deal with. Um, whereas if you just keep slowly printing money and, and just send us off into oblivion, it might it might actually be the right decision. I don't know. Like I, sometimes I think about that. It's like maybe they should just better off just printing money until we're until we're like you know 1920s Germany or something. Um, you know that way because we have alternatives now with technology and crypto. Crypto is just you could just switch to crypto. I mean I feel like people could easily do that. It would it would be somewhat seamless. To do that, I think it wouldn't be seamless, but you know, you, you would you would avoid at least like a Walking Dead scenario, you know, like like it wouldn't be like th that movie, The Road. Don't ever watch that movie. Me, me and Jeff used to always talk about that movie. It was the worst movie. It's it's like a good, it's like a well made movie, but it's awfully depressing, just horribly depressing. Um, so that's that's what's going on. So. I'm just keeping you guys uh, abreast of our situation, you know. Uh, keep an eye on this uh, trucker mandate uh, for the for the cross border. You might see an effect on your supply chain. I would be stocking up now. I would be stocking up now on all all these things. Not only storable food, like I like I've said a million times before. I've been talking about having good storable foods for like seven years on this on this uh, channel on this show. Um, and then also crypto as well for seven years. One of my first videos was about Dogecoin, and that was like back in 2013 when it first came out. Um, and so, you know, these things, we can we can hedge our bets a little bit on it, uh, but you also got to think outside of food, gold, silver, crypto, even into other things like, you know, have a store, uh, you know, a, a stock of... Um, uh, of batteries even you know batteries or light bulbs or toilet paper feminine products or or, or toothpaste uh, toothbrushes th things like this things you don't normally think of maybe some Tylenol or something um, any kind of supplements you, you you use or take water filters water filters are probably more important than anything um, or, or storable water itself uh, so so you know these are the things you got to think about. And then if you have any big purchases you want to make, I'd probably lean toward making them now. Um, at least that's what I've been doing. Uh, not that I really have any money, but so that, that's what, that's what you got to do. Uh, so that being said, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow me here on YouTube, obviously, but if you're watching on BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, follow there too. Uh, also on Gab and Twitter where I'm Always posting a little less on Twitter now because I deleted my Twitter app, but I also still post here on desktop. Um, and uh, I've been posting more on Gab now. 
And then if you want to support my work, I have a Patreon and a PayPal and all that. Other than that, it's been pressed. Keep your head up. Stay real. And no fear.